What's going on, Shady people? Shady Banger Nail, when you back to our Stanley Parable series, a part of our Shady Steam series. It's a series inside of a series. And if you're excited like I am, let me know in the comment section below by telling me which of the endings that we're going to see is your favorite. Now, you, we, we pretty much got the gist of this game. I know it's been a little while, but you're basically this man, Stanley, and the narrator's telling a story, and we got to do what he says, or we don't do what he says. We got to figure out what other endings we have. We had some crazy ones in the last episode. Go ahead and go back and watch it if you have not yet. Uh, this has been one of my favorite games that I've ever played in my entire life. I absolutely love it. Let me make sure I'm recording the sound. I am recording the sound. Fantastic. It is loading, and we're going to click to skip because we've already... Yes, we don't... Okay. Here we go. Oh, wait. Did we start off in front of our computer before? All right, so I know... That one of the endings I really want to do. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I, I just hearing his Stanley voice gets me excited to to again. <clears throat> Perhaps he has um, Mr. Memo. One of the things I really want to do is I want to go ahead. Ugh, none of them are waiting input. Darn it. Um, I want to go ahead and do the very. I think the very first one we did was when I had a wife, but I didn't have a wife. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his. This was not the correct way to. And the I think this room. is the way that and I went. Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I don't remember exactly where we went. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first. I think open I went straight left. right here. Yeah, I think so. Stanley was so bad at following directions. It's incredible he wasn't <laughs> five years ago. I'm pretty sure. That this is the very first ending that we had done. Look, Essentially, Stanley, this was I think the... perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I, I don't want to interrupt him. He's such a polite-sounding gentleman. Although I we already know that he can be kind of sassy. Trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Oh, really? There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Okay. I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. It's so funny because I remember when I first this saw it, that. Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. When I first saw that, I was like, oh, I have a woman? To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. And now I know you guys have told me the other to ending, the instead of picking up this. the phone, is to unplug it. Out. Oh, no, 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 you can't. Did you just unplug the phone? Now, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly? I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white. That's not even what happened! Credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <laughs> <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the <laughs> real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. Are we kidding it's the right best now? <laughs> part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. <laughs> Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person Fish! who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. 
turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> my goodness, is it 4.30? Excellent. Okay, I Making need to Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. <laughs> what is Most this? medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Oh, okay, so I don't have to pick up the phone now? But Okay, alright. We'll go this way. Because he told us to, so we'll do it. This door? Are we gonna go in this door? No, we're not. Okay. Okay. I guess I'm going back on this. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and- Oh dying. yeah, now it's fenced in! Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We right. just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Huh. Interesting. So now I'm starting to feel like, in real life, my decisions actually matter. Whereas when I first played this game, I thought the message was that our decisions don't actually matter. Uh, I'm really intrigued. As to what exactly the message this game is supposed to be sending to me. Working our way back. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending. The story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Door on the left. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. Okay. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I feel like I should go in the right door. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Look at this. The game is glitching. Well, purposely glitching, I'm sure. All right, so I have to. I have to go on the left door. It looks like. Yeah, there's nothing over here. All right, so I gotta. I gotta go on the left door. I'm glad I went to the right door though. Paintings. Were those paintings there when we first went through this game? Ugh. Oh. It's ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. I wonder if this would have happened to if we didn't go in the right door. Entirely, to willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Alright, well, we're going on... Oh, this is different. That was a really cool way of shutting the game down. We've seen him do it before. What? Oh, up. I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. What is going with you? You, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see. 
Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. I am not a child! I'm a man-child. <sighs> My story... <laughs> If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Uh -uh. <laughs> behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and we're doing always this again? putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, I could fall into the this door voice. It's left. really nice. All right, all right. So let's let's just go in the door on the left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, I can't even go down anymore. Upstairs to his boss's office. What? What is that garbage? I'm six and my voice cracked. Wait, maybe I should have gone on the right door. I think I messed the ending up. Oh. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human this life. This is different. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up. Night now, Shark 115. He from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Night Shark 115. Night Shark 115. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? I'm trying, Please man! speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. What? Okay, fine. You're not gonna do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. <laughs> He's so frazzled. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? Stanley? Hello? Are you kidding me? Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything alright? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? <laughs> the only choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You can't be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. He's groveling with Stanley. This. The story needs it. Oh, I can't wait to get a new chair. My back is killing me. Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. 
Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Well, there we go. Well, that was one ending. Uh, that was a rather long ending. We're going to go ahead and do another ending. One, uh, one that I know. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. Wait, did we do this already? What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure beyond any doubt was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Was that it? I knew that closing the door, that's it. That's, an, that's one of the endings, is when you just close the door. Huh. All right. Hmm. All right, I think there's one. Do we have time for one other ending? Hmm. Wait, there's a phone ringing. Hi, Stanley. I uh, just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. So now I have a wife? Well, do I or don't I? Where's the narrator? What is going on? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I wonder if her voicemail was just a little Easter egg. Yet there was not a single And that's not that under. there's not actually an alternate ending for us to get right now. Disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping hmm. he might find an answer there. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. <laughs> it was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if he was to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet FA. Are you are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? <laughs> Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. So I guess the voice message from my wife was you just a little Easter egg. No choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find right. out. Right. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friends, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. 
I hope your friend is going to I thought he was going to say XD or something for that. Oh my gosh. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Right, exactly. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. <laughs> He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer. Right. Making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. I'm not moving. I'm not moving! This guy's full of sass. I wonder how long he'll wait. I'm gonna wait with him. We are only 21 minutes into this video. You think I'm gonna, you think I'm gonna, you think I'm gonna fold? You think I'm this napkin right here? You think I'm gonna fold? I won't fold, Mr. Narrator. You'll fold, Mr. Narrator. Is he gonna? Is he gonna fold? All right. Ah, uh, this is taking a pretty long time. Should I open the door? Should I open the door? I thought I was supposed to sit in here. Ah, second player. It's good. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. All I know is that the game's supposed to end at some point. Is he really gonna wait? Is he really gonna wait? He's gotta fold. I don't wanna fold. Alright, so I think, uh... I think that's it. I don't think the game actually ends here. I think it's just a little scene that happens. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs yeah, I think that's to it. his boss's All office. Right. I thought maybe it was an ending. But apparently it's not. Apparently it's not. Now with all Okay, so the office isn't green anymore. It's back to its normal thing. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had a was was the... extra secret pin number. 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code. Are these doors going to open? sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. So those doors aren't going to open. Okay, those doors are not going to open. I'm trying to see if there's any other endings that we could possibly get. We've already gotten... We've already gotten, uh... We've gotten all the endings. Well, not, we've got all the endings up to this point, so I'm not going to waste your time and just walk through because there's nothing else for us to do at this point in the story. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like rating down below. If you want to see more Stanley Powerball, let me know by letting me know. We really only had one ending in this, didn't we? Well, we had two. We closed the door, and we had the... What was the first one? 
Oh, the first one's when we unplug the phone. So let me know which one of those two you like the most. Uh, I definitely liked unplugging the phone the most, actually, obviously. So I'm going to get out of here. When we get back, we're going to go ahead and explore the rest of the endings. I believe there's about eight more, perhaps. I'm not sure. Maybe a little less. But we're going to do them all in this LP. Have yourselves a good day. But above all else, keep it shady. Really obvious, there's a good chance he'll go for the knockoff, but he doesn't, thankfully. He doesn't, thankfully. And that is very good for me. 